You and this class thing. It's your own inferiority complex. With good reason. Just because you failed? I don't want to succeed. I don't want what it brings. You don't want anything. Not even me. Look, they try and tell everyone, right, that there's no class structure in this country? That we're all on equal footing, the fucking lucky, my asshole. You remember in school, we haven't made the mistakes of the mother country. We have an egalitarian society here. It's a conspiracy to keep us asleep. All the while, the middle class go raking in all the money off the backs of the poor, <laughs> laying down all this bullshit about values and morals. <laughs> What's this got to do with him? Why are you having this party anyway? Because I'm lonely. You have me. No, no, when, when we play that back in, you're just going to mix it as we were discussing before. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to record video off the little camera while he records video and audio off this. This is sort of more doco footage. That way, because we've got two cameras running, I'm just going to take a This is for the, 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 the what I love about music is the moon. Yeah, that's, that's, the moon. yeah, and that's what I really want to do. I want to set the mood. I want the audience already inside the house before anyone has a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to turn and see what your indifference has done. I've seen it. I think that maybe that sort of attention given to me will harden him up. I want to make sure I don't see that thing all shriveled and dead. I want him to fuck me! When I first met him, before we started up together, I had this idea of how red-blooded he is. Was. Never according to him. I was untried. Look at what's happening now. I know that any other man would at the very least not be afraid right now. Their brains would be switched off. All they would want to do is fuck. Get off. My own selfish ideologies. Uh, uh, <laughs> He's going down on me now. <laughs> but I can't come. There's no momentum, no build up, no blood rush. Limp dicks are a cold moment. 
I want to feel sexy. Desirable. I beg him with my eyes. I ask him to come up and penetrate me. If Venus is touching my ankle now, it feels like there's some life flowing down there. Is it more than touching me? Is it bumping my leg now? Oh God, I'm ready to forego the condoms. We'd have to stop just at the moment he's hard and tear into the wrapper. Careful, my teeth don't cut into the rubber. By the time we've got the damn thing positioned, I can see it. It may as well be happening. It'll fold. Condoms, I say in a feigned whisper. And then the moment is broken. I've given him a reason for not having an erection. I've left off the bed. Now he's staring at my sexy ass. I go back to bed with the condoms. Christ, there's no way to make these things look appealing. Fuck the pill, though. What the fuck is that? I see it. I frown. I make a face that pretends surprise, as if I've been ignorant all along, I say. It's okay. We can cuddle. I prefer intimacy anyway. I'm hurt. I'm crucified. I can't even say if it's me. Oh, when he gets a moment alone, he'll bank off and get hard, no problems. He'll explode a double amount of cum from all the sexual tension. He knows the problems are all in his head. He's got to get around it, race it before it takes control. <sighs> he can't explain why his body is numb. I wonder, maybe he is a fag. He goes through all the motions in his head. I know he does. He wouldn't admit it. But he told me once he found the idea of male saliva in his mouth disgusting. And he's told me all the wonderful stories about all the beautiful women he's lost, one after another. Because he was too ashamed to tell them the truth. The so-called truth. He says it bashed in their egos and they went after other men in front of him. I'm a stupid, ignorant fucker. Sometimes I've tried to stay calm enough to talk to him. Give him that sense of trust he says he needs to be able to, well, perform. He told me this story once about how his mother, she came into his room with the sex book, you know, the kind where they have the baby advance to a boy and then to an adolescent and finally to a man in his prime. Likewise, on the opposite page, the female species. The same process, but with the minor differences a mother is charged to impart onto you. You know, first period, breasts. She whipped that book open and he started to laugh. She slammed that book shut and told him to leave. She said it would be up to his father to let him in on all the sexual secrets. His father never told him and he was left wondering where the hole was. He said it bothered him for years. Every time he got an erection, it confused him. By his own configuration, he decided the hole was somewhere near the belly button. He wondered if he got an erection, how would he bend it in? He used to look at his flaccid penis and say, that's how I want it to look when it happens. That's how he wanted to portray himself. I wasn't prepared to question the damn thing. He, like me, can't believe this has to happen. Hey, sometimes he's okay. It's not like it wasn't the beginning when he couldn't do anything. He's fucked up my head. Just like the Marquis de Sade was really a saint who kind of got off throwing his intellectual weight around him. 
talk about my past, my problems. I had never talked. Except in my cowboy poetry and I lied on those pages, I jingled and I jangled. Michelle, she was broken and she thought that maybe I could finish the job. She wanted me to take her all the way down and cripple her soul quadriplegic. See? I didn't find any of that out until months later. I was too afraid of her to see anything of her. In the world. I've always wanted women to love me. And Michelle, she's smart. Not weak, but strong. You know, I can sort of handle it because she's vulnerable. She hated my arrogance. She didn't know I was an actor in between the writers. She wanted to put me in my place and she was just the woman for the job. And yes, I was not the man that she thought I was. Now see, she wanted some guy that could talk long into the night about her job, her friends, her family and the shittiness of the world. See, she had been before me seeing some guy who was dumb or something or at least not very conceptually ideal. And that was the reason for me. I was a poet, a literal intellect of some kind. My bullshit cowboy poems jingling and jangling. My anagram poses. Michelle thought that I was a guy that disgusted us. Never occurred to her that people historically laughed at me. Oh, there's light on my face. <laughs> Reminds me of a Humphrey Bogart film. Circa 30s. Pete Gray. Well, so and say you're all a bunch of poets anyway, hey? You've all got your, your little groups. Your little fanzines, your little magazines. Some of you, you got books like me, but it doesn't matter. No publisher does it for real. Government requirement it is, my ladies. No one reads it. Right, I'll read you some poems anyway, eh? Hey? All of them badly written. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be better than your precious shit. I call this one The Eyes of a Fanatic. She wondered at the sadness in the eyes of the television children. Bloated brown bellies and fly encrusted lips. Or was it some food based thing that resembled shit? Then the ex tennis jam chick comes out of the African heart with some really big, white, sadistic smile on her face. You too can help these children for just one dollar a day. 
she watched this commercial wondering if her dollar a day would really go to the commercial that had to have cost at least 60 grand. Cars were roaring past her window with frost design curtains. Bills were stuck to the bridge. She had forgotten to put the milk back. Two days off out of seven. That was what she was thinking. She should be outdoors, playing sports. Perhaps even, yes, tennis. Oh, that's right. A lily white dress was dirty. Mysterious brown stains. Out of nowhere. What do you mean? Not to be called that. I just said you were sexy bitch, huh? How many times do I have to tell you? I shouldn't have to prompt you. I never used to. Yeah, well, I know you hear me. I say it a hundred times. Maybe in your head. Yeah, well, isn't that better? More honest and real? Why can't you say it? Any other man would. Maybe I should go out. Maybe I could get some sort of attention. Oh, shit. They just want to fuck you. Well, it's good. That'd be something. I don't get it, Carl. Just because I can't fuck you, it doesn't mean that I don't love you. You're thinking about it too much. All right, you're going to go fuck off with another man. I was making a point. What point was that? You used to love me. You used to lust after me. That's crap. Those months in the beginning. It was in your eyes. My body's all about my head swim. We've been together for five years now, and you say it's an issue of trust. How can I trust you when you don't believe me? I just want to fuck my man. No. Come back. It's okay, I'm getting sick. It's not physical vanity. I know. It's conditioning. Fuck you. I'm not intrusive to the soul of women, but what they're taught to believe about men. Oh, what's that? That all we have is hard dicks. Well, largely true. Well, I'm the live thing. Fuck you! No, I think it's generic in me. I've always been fucking Listen, here! to the point of the way that you react angrily... It hurts! Yeah, well, maybe I've got problems, and you just happen to be afflicted by them because of their very nature. Oh, very clever, Carl. But otherwise true. Where were you last night? <sighs> Nowhere. Have you met someone else? How could I get it up with someone I don't know? I wasn't a virgin when we met. Half the time, people. Fucking, they're just enacting out the shittiness of their own souls. I have loved other men. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, and they fucked well and gently. You have fond memories of them. You just lie around while I go to work. You never have any money. Your money is just gone. I know when your dole comes in. I pay every. Oh, day. great! We're gonna have a fight! It's killing me! Why are we still together? I'm sick of coming up with all the answers. How I feel. It's always about you and you don't feel anything. What do you care how I feel? What I do and how I do it? What do you do? How could I ever show you? All I'm doing is waiting around for you to show it. I'm here, aren't I? You're not here! Every day you're less and less. We are doing this to each other. I want the man I fell in love with. I'm waiting for him to come back. Uh, well, maybe that man's gone. Maybe he was never here. Maybe he's some actor, Gypsy, who just conned you. Oh, maybe he's an idealist. You're right. What do you mean, I'm right? I was just supposing. I'm standing right here in front of you. You don't have the stolen rose in your head. You don't have plans for dinner in your head. You don't have me on your mind at all.
I'm so glad I'm alone. I come home from work, he's gone. It's Thursday night and there's no note, so that means he's gone for at least an entire night. He's not allowing himself to be accountable anymore. No love and kisses. That's a vacant and personal get well card so far as he's concerned. I'm turning 30 in three days. It was five years ago when I met him. He was on stage doing poetry. He was 29 then. He had the most beautiful hands. Man hands, big. His poetry was horrible, full of cheap cynicism for the world and for literature and for people. I thought it was funny at the time, just some kind of persona, and he didn't write beautiful things. He said he did it on purpose. I was only 25, a baby, sort of. I thought to myself that it would be a kind of high form of love if I could get him to write me a love poem. A pure love poem filled with hope, aspiration, life. I guess it's the same context as a woman trying to turn a gay man. A set challenge, an affront to the ego. I was no better than him. The reason I'm glad I'm alone is it makes it impossible for me to react to anything. I feel numb, just like he says he does. I'm ready to leave him. I don't know why I don't. It's disgusting that I won't. No one understands why I stay or allow him to stay or not let him leave me. He loved me once so completely. It's true. I want it back. I want what I was before he stripped me of it. I think I can only get that kind of love the way he was from him. I know it could be from another man. Any man could show more love to me than he does. He says he still loves me. But no one has ever come close to the same sort of intensity that he gave me. All you had to do to see it was look in his eyes. What kind of person was I then? I was a fucking good person. That's what I was. I believed in loving and caring and trusting. He took that away from me. He told me that I was wrong, that everyone was out there for themselves, fucking everyone else over. He pointed it all out and I saw it too, just like he did. My whole world came crumbling down. The way we are now, the way we talk, it doesn't matter what about. One of us always bucks under the strain. Mm. And if the phone ever rings out here in the middle of nowhere, it's bound to be one of my friends punishing me subtly. Just calling to check up on you, making sure you're okay, not about to end it in a lonely fit of despair. I'd be the same. Be a lot more judgmental. <sighs> Two people died in the hospital today. It was strange because one of them was a kid, the other an old man. Someone's son and someone's father. They died side by side. Oh, there wasn't enough room to put them in the correct designated rooms. They died exactly at the same moment. It struck me that the truest ambition of love is to love and die comforted by your lover, your friend, your lifelong partner. In the end, one person is left to deal with whatever is left. If you ask me, the kid dying is the least tragic of the two. He only had a few years for his parents to get to know him, and it would take less years for him to fade enough from their memories to require a photograph to see him clear enough. He won't be ingrained in their very souls. A corpse on a bed is something I can deal with. It's those who fight their death that put a strain on me. We smile at them as if to say everything will be okay. And then, maybe as soon as the next day, they're gone. Where I work, it's an environmental monument to the poor. If you don't have enough money for medical cover, you end up there. It reeks. The doctor's just barely out of med school, dying to get out there and heal the rich. 
do some real medical work, they like to say. Oh, the nurses. They resent me because I'm there and I don't have to be. I have enough degrees to work in any hospital I want. They resent the patients where I care for them. Patients blatantly rush to their deaths. The institution that is charged with their care insists that they die as quickly and as cheaply as possible. Oh, it's a sin to die slowly in a tax-funded medical facility. They make sure the patients understand. They do. The shame you can see in their eyes over and above the pain and fear. None of these people ever wanted to be a burden. Most of the time, the patients concentrate on inducing a quick death while the doctors and nurses professionally ignore them. It's a huge shock when you realize how easy it is to die. This is my world away from Carl. I'm not sure which is worse. It's impossible to ever talk to him. If I have death in my head, I dream it too. He doesn't want to hear it. Death is something he wants to ignore. It scares him. A lot of patients are young men, guys who grew up in the same suburb as he did, live like he does, except none of them have the same pretenses that he has. They're not ashamed or pretending they're something they're not. When they see that they are going to die, that their lifespan is going to end not just days, but hours, minutes, they go crazy. All the anger in their thwarted, wasted lives spews out. Where I work, it's in. The ward I work in is to make room for those who just might recover and they want to make sure that no one from the general public, especially anyone with a sense of common decency, gets a good look at what poverty affords you. I told Carl some stories once about the young men crazy with fear. He made some comment. <laughs> what are they doing having me, a woman, attending patients like that? Like him. It's just that they don't have medical cover. I've seen a lot of Carl's lying on those beds. Sullen or smiling, they are all revealing the death head. I would never tell Carl this, but they flirt with me all the time. They thank me for everything I've done. They're truly grateful, and it makes them hope. And when they hope, they want more. It's not sleazy. It's not pathetic or weak, not evasive at all. They want something out of life as a gift to the bodies that have failed them. They want to remember a life. God, you know how it is when you're sick. You can never remember feeling well. And they know they are never going to get better. It's tempting. I'm not sick. I'm not really lustful. chance for something beautiful. I don't think I could disappoint them like that. It is better to remain a fantasy, a burning fissure as they fade out. What are the chances, huh? What? Us going out tonight? Did you book? I wasn't sure what you asked. I said book the table. Uh, I thought we could just jump a cab and see where we go. It was your idea to go to the place where we went on our first date. Uh, romance. Exterior of that dick out and chase balls We're not going out. Hey, you're always tired on Friday nights. I deliberately said I wouldn't work the night shifts. I'm not trying to put you down. I know how you feel about my job. Well, wow, just a slight of it, isn't it? I need to quit. So I quit. What, you're going to support us? Sure, why not? With royalty checks? If anyone can get a job, they say so all the time, don't they? So, what's been stopping you? Look what it's doing to you. I thought you said you were going to clean this crap up. It's early. Were there any calls? Yes, fine rain, but they hung up when I answered. I guess we're going to your friends. Can you get up here? I need 
this place. Get this place so we can run through our shit. Friends are the same as the hangman and his chopping block. You never know which way you're going to get. I'm tired. Get is what most of them pray for. They pray for it because no one cares. I don't care. What I was taught never prepared me for those people. That place. I grew up with them. It's last on the list. Well, in higher education doctrine, I saved myself a lot of time. At any hospital, I could get a placement. Like put yourself through the strain. They don't try. They just sit around in the tea room, smiling at each other, submitting their application to the private system. They know that society doesn't care about poor people. It is an act. It's a great show of care when they hate them all to death. Love gets these people nowhere. They're too ugly. Maybe you don't care. If I did something, there would be a long trail of blood and tortured in trains. The best you can do is talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you, and you. Kate, you're confusing the two. Love or care? Hey, they're the same thing. Only in that they both can be perfectly faked. I promise to you, no matter how tired I was, we are going out. I'm a bit broke. It's the second Friday. I thought we could just get a bottle of wine. You got paid. I had bills. What bills? Personal ones. Prostitutes. What the fuck are you talking about? Pokies. Don't start this. Horses. Take that fucking gleam out of your and eyes. Horses sucking your cock. You were standing Fuck over you. me. Look, there were Fuck. no whores. Pokies. You said that. Just to tell me. Look, you're already getting you're hysterical. You're fucking whores and not fucking me. Here we go. What, you gambling again? No. How did you spend... Four hundred dollars in one day. On a bill. I pay all the bills. A personal one. What about the money you already owe me? Four hundred. I was forced to stand here and take this, and I'm telling myself to take this verbal and whatever the oh, fuck it is. You fucking joke! I know that I'm shit. Okay, I don't care. You keep pushing, you don't stop. What do you think? Just because I don't cry or break down, I don't feel anything. I didn't fuck a whore, you were 50 to 50 on odds. I gambled it, it was pokies. Hate me then, if that's gonna make you feel better. If that's gonna make you feel more like a man, maybe you'll start treating me like a woman. What kind of man I become? Be a man, follow through with something for once. You think it's fun fucking around with me? I was brought up to believe in love and caring. Who cares? You resent everything about me. I resent what you believe. They're dead eyes. But they'll survive you. Just the same as you were then. Oh, I wish. Men your age have careers, wives, children. And they hate it. They commit. They are unexceptional men who realize they're afraid. It disgusts me, you 
lying on that couch all day, wanking off to dirty magazines. It's too much to ask you to fuck me. Christ. Is that what you want? What? Those sluts. Oh, it's fantasy. You've got a real woman standing right in front of you. I see. You don't get it. Oh, and you don't fuck prostitutes. Oh, I don't think you're being irrational. Should I feel complimented? Well, could you just hear me out? Come on! The boy you think? I don't think the women are real. Well, obviously. I meant in the magazine. Why did you go? Why? I think it says something about the kind of man you are. It was. You're still buying women for sex. See, what you have to do, Michelle, is get rid of this cliche of the poor, downtrodden prostitute. Oh, I'm sure they must love having a hundred desperate and disgusting men go through them a week. Some that do it can handle it intellectually. Why did you? Because... Because the first time that I ever tried to... With a girl that had this crush on me, but that's not the point. I tried to, and nothing happened. I was... I was... You know, I was numb in my body. I had to try it with a woman who wouldn't care. I had to pick, chose one, and off we went. Still wearing my towel, and I only, I only bought half an hour. And I was, I was pretending that I was drunk, and I was too shy to ask her for a blowjob, Matt. And she was moaning and groaning as if it was marvelous, and it embarrassed me that I was that stupid. Masturbate. That's what we did. I didn't even come. You abused her. It was hateful what you did. Where's the hate in that? A magazine is not a woman in the flesh. No, it's the idea. You brought that shit into my house. It's not anything real. You know that I can't get it out until I'm used to the woman. And me, in the middle of nowhere, awake all night wondering where you are and not sleeping until you come back. I can handle you hiding me. You're despising me. While your male friends who used to uh, hang around waiting for you to come to your senses and get rid of them. Soft cock who can't get it up for a real woman. Any wonder! Big, tough, working class Carl, afraid of women. See, I can't tell you when I fuck up, Michelle, because this is what happens. You don't see why I'm here. Do you think I'd be here? Put up with all this shit if I didn't love you? Maybe we can't recognize ourselves without each other. I don't want to recognize myself without you. You weren't like this when I met you. I'm not all changed. I am. You never used to gamble. I used to always win. You're a poet, not a gambler. You're meant to write me the perfect love poem. I was never a poet. Oh, I was acting. You used to write. I was trying to believe. In me? Show it then. You are the spy woman. You are ready to take on anyone. You scared the shit out of me. You have this pain in your eyes. I look in your eyes and all I see is death. I broke into a world where I don't belong. You're saying you didn't love me. I just represented a chance. You don't feel pain if it's not you it's afflicted on. I've never felt so deeply for someone and I've never been treated as badly as you treat me. You kept me at arm's length the whole time. You know why? It's not an excuse. I've been betrayed. Oh, we've all I'm been betrayed. betrayed. I'm 30, my old 20s pissed away on you. I don't want what you want. I want stability. I want us to have children. I want us to buy a house together. <laughs> How could I buy a house? I have a credit rating that will never be forgiven! What partners do is find a way. Uh, I don't know if I can handle the screaming. The responsibility! I had my hand around your throat. So? Look what it means! I don't want a man who gambles and fucks prostitutes. <laughs> I 
I have long since forgotten the concept of discussion. Arguments without fists, and besides, I have said enough terrible things in my life. Amnesia has made me an anti-intellectual. She talks about things. I reply with subtle hostilities, you know. I never once imagined that she would pick up on the metal home challenge me. I backstab, I trip, I fluster. Oh, it's still in the game. The discussions can still continue, only I have to justify my attitudes. Hopefully arrive at a point of empathy. I'm trapped. Empathy takes a long time in coming with me. I've grown up fighting. My favourite. I'd rather fight than fight. I have always assumed that all men are emotionally self-contained, no matter what the price. <laughs> Junkies. God, they disgusted me. I used to get them in corners and torment them for being weak, for falling. Me, I said, who has suffered for so long, and they, these broken down stuffed toys, dying from the inside out with the luxury of the fall. I offer no foundation for her to stand on, or so she suspects she's too fragile to risk it. I touch her shoulder. She allows it, but she's willing the flesh of my fingers to die. You know, maybe she thinks that I won't make it all the way with her, especially without any help. She needs me to be a man in the context of capable love. I am trying to love with bills and a clean house. I can't do it. Clanking of plates. Sound of feet pounding up and down the hallway. She has beaten my soul to a pulp and I have gotten what I deserve. See, all that happened was I was mean and she fought back. She's crying and using the language of action to compensate for the incomprehensible mean words that fail to describe how we really feel. I know I should be holding her, that I am ready to hit her for doing this to me, but I am really doing it to her. My silences, my stillborn attempts, believe how bad things have got. <laughs> My wallet empty. Gambling, it's poverty. My doll comes in, taint it. See, what happens is, I think 20 bucks won't go astray. Not that harshly anyway, but then there it is. The chance to win a hundred. Fabled thousands. I decide that I will get no more than 20 out. If it's in, I say, then I'll play the 20 to a loss as it's almost certain to be. You see, only first time gamblers are lucky on such small money. I will walk when it runs out. But by the time I reach the ATM, I realise that there's no point at all in such a small outlay. I might as well stay at home. I decide that 50 is the smallest amount that I can bet with a chance. See, the machine will think it's dealing with a high roller on a 50, maybe tricking it, making it pay out high soon. I don't know if there's any sense to that, but inventing a minor system on pokies that makes you feel less dumb. I have to promise myself to pull out on the 50. 
Maybe even consider the 30 mark. Two over 20 I roll, broad in collective sweeps. I lose, I press, and lose again. This can be a good sign. You don't want the small payouts paying the percentage return. Oh, shit, 10 credits, what's that? 50 cents, fuck you. It's down to the 30 mark. With the free spins, they've nearly come up twice. They've been just off, too high or too low or too right. It's falling me. It's not winding over. It's suckering me in for some skinny drunk to come walking on over to my machine and collect returns on his first dollar. Jackpot's on $900. The little lady say it starts drawing at $700. I got $5 left in the machine. The thing will only fuck with me to fuck me now. What's the harm in another 20? It's only a $70 outlay. Small win. $7, but there are only slight discrepancies in the lineup. I press the button and spin. Another win. $20 this time. Well, I could double or nothing, come out with my initial 50 and lose my original proposed 20. 20 something dollars in the machine, 50 already gone and nothing happening. Press and lose. The odds of pulling off a win on 2 over 20 over and above my outlay, they're probably 100 to 1. See if a horse won a race on those odds, it'll make the front page. Play fewer lines, to play less credits, to play more shots, but only miss the matches. $10, it's nothing. It's one packet of smokes, I get a rational. I play 3 over 20. Two white moons in the first and second box. The third! Dipping below! Miss! Zilch credits. Seventy dollars raped of its soul. When was the last time I bought groceries? When was the last time I bought Michelle a beer at the bar? Paid my side of the rent? I'm left without a choice. I leave my coat on the chair and I go. Another $50 note. I don't check the receipt like I don't open the infringement mail. I am dropping $120 into this and it's meant to pay off at 84 cents to the dollar. The rolls. Getting promising formations but low wins. Good and bad signs. Now, I am Dostoevsky at the roulette wheel working the odds. I gotta escalate my stake to five over 20 to win serious money on a poor formation, the most likely event. I am no longer under any pretense. All around me I can hear the machine sing. Someone is swearing at the barman again. This time I withdraw the lot. I can't afford to lose $120. Maybe I should be using coins. Maybe I should change machines. I can't! It's mathematical suicide to abandon this machine fat with my 150. I've lost count of the small wins. It's close to the 84 cents, but it doesn't matter now! Those who proclaim love aloud from the rooftops are really just looking down on everyone else. The Pope loves to kill Latins. Thinking of Dostoevsky in the snows of Siberia. Five years for debt. Financial ruin is just another aesthetic displeasure. I will never be able to write as well as him. A primitive Russian. A Slav of all things. A novelist. I was a poet. No one would think to compare. I got nine dollars left in the bank and three hundred dollars laughing at their escape down this machine. There's this Asian guy, late thirties, early forties, pox skin, bad teeth, he's smoking Asian tobacco, heavy smoke. He's standing directly behind me. How long has he been watching? Whole aisle is practically empty, putting in machines bacon, there have been no impressive rolls. Does he see a payer? Does he know I'm about to burn out? See, his woman wouldn't dare say a thing if he blew his way. She has the face of a woman beater, that sour look of defeat. The Asian savvy in the role of the dice is unparalleled. Natural born gamblers, half of them have this Buddhist approach of fuck it. I was gonna take her out, buy her a birthday present. The idea of winning the money to pay my share of the bills. 
Now I'm gonna lie to her. She will come home from work and look to me to validate the investment she's made in me. Credit gone. Sky TV doing boxing. Who gives a fuck? That's all over the carpet. No imagery can save me from this horror. No lie elaborate and disgusting enough to elevate me high enough to get out. Michelle is not going to accept that as an excuse. What are the odds? <laughs> what? Turn around. What do you want? I want to see your face. Well, I don't. What are the odds? <laughs> on what? Oh, come on! <laughs> Oh, that's a sure thing. It's a distance race. Filled up with weighted sprinters, two dollars each way. I hope I'm a favourite. Put you, me down for ten dollars to win. You're an artist. Look. Don't talk to me like I'm a child. Look at me, the picture of sanity. You have too much rage to be crazy. Rage is a normal reaction. You think you sound so clever, Carl, but all you sound like is cold. I beg to differ. That's your right. I rescinded my rights. You know, I feel really sorry for you, Carl. It's not even your fault, it was the way you were brought up. Who I was even two years ago would have recognised me now. Tomorrow's my birthday. Yes, I know, you're 30. I'm having some friends around. Who? Just a few people. How many is a few? About 15. You hate parties. Only if they're mine. Well? It's kind of special turning 30. I don't see how. I'm turning 30 and I don't want another shitty day. You can't trust me and I can't. Trust you. Your friends hate me. They think I'm scum. I wonder why. You don't care how I feel. If it wasn't for my friends, I would have killed myself by now. What stops you? I just told you. How does that work? They talk about how I feel. <coughs> they offer me a perspective. It's not your fault. It's his. He's a loser and a user. Get rid of him. At first they were on your side. And then they found out. You're an innocent hypocrite. I pay the rent, the bills feed you while you do nothing. You lose the plot. They've seen the states I've been in. Personally, I don't feel the need to appeal uh, to the sensitivities of my friends. Uh, well, maybe they don't care. Maybe they've caught on to your using ways. Some have. How does that make you feel? Nothing. Face me! I know you're crying. It could be that there's more in my life than you. Your job! Oh, don't you dare try and degrade what I do! Do you really care about those people? You'd be glad I do, because that's where you're going to end up. Probably. That doesn't scare you. No. Not emotional enough. Too clinical, actually. I want you to turn and see what your indifference does. I've seen it. My face has changed. So is mine. This has become hard and pinched in. You look terrible now. I've used my face. I was never beautiful, but I had something once. Another stolen item. Uh, and you're never going to look the same again. Two to one, huh? Yep. Yeah. I'll take it. I never told you what I was setting the odds against. Whether I trash your party or not. Please don't do it. What they did for me, for me to go back to you. I came back to you. I let you back in. You through the back door. Oh, please. I see, I couldn't bet any odds if he was coming to your party. I'm betting against myself as it is. Well, I haven't invited him. So I don't know what you see in him. He's my friend. Was my friend. Well, it's people like that who ruined art for me. What's he got to do with your writing? Oh, he plays guitar, doesn't he? It's like all drugs are the same if in the end. If I stopped you from seeing any of your friends... My friends would thank you for the excuse. Maybe it would be a good idea if my friends got to know you. <laughs> you remember that night in the pub? Oh, yeah, I remember. That middle class cunt. I'm middle class. You excuse. <laughs> you and this class thing, Carl, it's your own inferiority complex. With good reason. Just because you've failed. I don't want to succeed. I don't want what it brings. You don't want anything. Not even me. 
Let's see. They try and tell us that there's no class structure in this country. That we're all on equal footing, the fucking lucky my ass hole. Oh, you remember in school? Oh, we haven't made the mistakes of the mother country. We have an egalitarian society here. And all the while, the middle class go raking in all the money off the backs of the poor, preaching all this shit about values and morals. What's this got to do with him? Why are you having this party anyway? Because I'm lonely. You've got me. I've got what's left of us. You remember that night in the pub? That old bastard was sitting in the corner crapping on about Aboriginal land rights, just speaking a whole lot of shit. Well, your friend, he went and tore his throat out. He stood up for what he believed in. Oh, what does he believe? He believes that people have the right to exist from one. Does he? You heard everything he said to that guy. I didn't see you do anything. Do you name me? He probably agreed. No. See, I bet you a million bucks that if an Aboriginal walked towards him on the street, he would cross it if he didn't think it would look conspicuous. You should keep your mouth shut until you know the facts. He went to Sydney and crossed the bridge in protest of Aboriginal treatment. For raiding. He's sorry. Oh, so says his armband. You don't give a fuck about anyone, let alone them. I care enough about them not to give them a proxy sorry. A slogan just for show. I'm not about to go and shove an old drunk like that in the corner and berate him for what he believes. No. You're happy enough to do that to me. We're not dying. Aren't we? No, see, it's people like him that are the killers. It's a big thing for my friends to come here. Ten dollars against me losing me. Just do this one thing for me. You said that you would be dead if it wasn't for your friends. Yes. Because of me. Talk about innocent hypocrites. Yeah, well, you need someone else to tell you who you are. He has gotten rid of all of my friends. Before we moved in together here, I had a life outside of the net. He hated that. He witnessed me pull the plug on the life support system I had set up around me, and he smiled. These friends, they're all coming tonight, but they're all just waiting for me to get rid of him. They're making a show of their disapproval. What kind of friendly point is that? Meanwhile, I wait to exist exist inside his head again. I feel like nothing. I'm feeling like a zero of obsession. Shit I'm not your enemy. It's your big 
I look at myself in the mirror, I see myself fighting out, you know, sometimes it's like I got it to remember at the time. You come back to me. You shouldn't have rejected me. Maybe that will have a life. I gave them, I give them back right now. In this house this time, I won't be able to get them clean enough. You can't blame, blame. I had values and morals that you turned around on me so I couldn't recognize myself. They're our eyes now. Yeah, well, what about your friends? The friends I never see. Yeah, well, they're coming over tonight. A year ago, you would have taken me to a fancy restaurant. If you didn't have any money, you would have found some. If you wanted to go for dinner now, I'd go. I'd ditch my friends. I wouldn't mind paying for it. If you wanted to spend some time with me, do romantic things with me. It's not the same on your money. It's always my money. Exactly. You've been gambling all your money and you never said anything. I've been thinking all these terrible things about prostitutes. I've been trying to win the rent first lie I ever told you was making you think I could. Yeah! <laughs> hey, you know, this place is okay. It has its good points, but so did Hitler, right? It's funny, but being domesticated with a man is sort of an oxymoron. No, I'm, uh, I'm not writing anymore. I, um... I really haven't got anything to write about. Oh yeah, I mean, sure, about my own experiences scaled back to my own thoughts, but other people have said them before and a whole lot better, you know? The rest, I just leave that to the middle class wankers. Carl and I feel isolated here. You know, all those people who just want to be seen because their lives are full of nothingness. 
You know, living with your girlfriend, the pressure. I mean, I guess I should be grateful, but I still find it hard. It's, it's very, very, very hard. You know, it makes you wonder about the sense of close proximity when it comes to the idea of my intensity. No. It's so good to see you. No, I'm not working anymore. I'm so fucking tired, eh? Ah, oh, yeah, you know how I got caught on that tax fraud? <laughs> yeah, dumb, I know. But I really needed the extra cash, and it's not as if the government is the most honest institution. You know, can you please take that judgmental look off your face? So what? I stole money. Those cunts wanted to put me in jail for it. Yes! I know I broke the law, so what? The minute you cross the road, you've broken all kinds of rules and laws that are all going to accrue fines. You know, as an example, they're making it really easy to justify any lie or theft or rot. You know? You don't see any of those cunts pull up in front of a judge. Role models are exempt from their own consequences. That's what they're saying. So... It was like revenge, really. This close I was to going to jail. I can't believe you bought you that necklace. What was the occasion? Fuck it, man. If you don't go in for a trade or a profession, you can look forward to the jails and the hospitals. For nothing. Were you fighting? Michelle, <clears throat> she's circling around my jacket all the time about some employment thing, but, you know. It's the weekend, because that's when everybody goes out. Yeah, I know, man, but fuck it. No, Carl, he's still writing. It's an editing, or whatever process you want to call it. Fact is, mate, I don't give a fuck anymore. I've given up trying to wade through the lies. That's the trouble. Oh, no, 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 no. See, you look at the state of literature in this country, you know? They all complain because no one buys their shit. You know, it sits on the bookshelves getting dusty one week after some snooty-nosed cunt has stood on some podium wearing eyeglasses lisping into a microphone. You're fucking drunk. Who the fuck is you? These are my friends. All these months They've been ignoring me and I've been ignoring them. You told me to get rid of them, I fucking did. I've invested everything into you and you've given me nothing back. Nothing except a lazy slob who lies around the house all day wanking off. What the fuck is wrong with wanking off? You waste all your cum on yourself just like you waste all your money on yourself. And these are your friends and you are yelling out this shit and you're a dirty bitch. <laughs> hey! What the fuck are you looking at, mate? No, no. Don't you turn around. Don't you pretend you didn't give me that glare. What are you, mate? Are you better than me? Hey! Hey! Hey. <laughs> Do you want to fuck my girlfriend? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember in the early days, you know, you still thought you had a chance, eh? Hey, hey, you thought you were showing some kind of pure love. Well, what is my love, fuckwit? What was my love, wanker? What? You got nothing to say, soft cock. Look at you. You emancipated fucking Nancy boy. How the fuck do you think you're gonna beat me in a fight with those skinny arms? Have you ever done a day's work in your life? Fuckwit. Fuckwit? What job do you do? I would love to fucking know. Oh, my job? Mm -hmm. Oh, my thing mm. is that I have to put up with your shit 24 hours a day. I wouldn't have time to get a job even if I wanted to, and that's a fact. No, oh, no, don't forget, Carl. You're a genius. You don't have to. It's a tragedy if you do all that time wasted when you could be spending it writing your hateful little poems. <laughs> and what's this guy, hey? Uh, hey, hey, yeah. I've seen you on stage with your little microphone, Gene. You know, with a little guitar, hey? I suppose you think you're seducing the crowd, hey? Well, what are you singing about, middle-class trash, hey? About how fucked this world is? About how sensitive you are, hey? All those racists out there! Hey, mate, where do you live? Look, mate, you have five seconds to answer me. I'm gonna smack you in the fucking mouth. Oh. 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 It's so nice out there, isn't it, hey? Hey? Oh, your parents, look at Oh, you little bitch way now. Oh. You're an artist. Come here. Don't you let assholes push you around. <laughs> you are a talented motherfucker. You remember that. Hey, mate. What are you wearing all those secondhand old man's clothes for anyway, hey? 
Your oldies are rich. Why don't you just hit them up for a fucking loan? Hey, mate, don't you dare fuck with me. I have got plenty of shit on you, mate. Yes, that's right. I was at the pub that night you went at that old man. See, first, you were coming around to my house. This is my fucking house. This is my fucking house. Oh, wait, this is an ownership thing. I pay the rent. What do you do with all your money, Carl? Oh, that's right. You piss it up against the wall playing pokies, you poor white trash. <laughs> <laughs> That's right! At least I'm fucking acknowledging the problem, mate! Hey, you wouldn't see me walking over that bridge with my little badge of apologies! Hey, what are you sorry for, mate? I'm not fucking sorry, because I'm not doing anything about it! You evil little shit! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I bet you fucking cross the road! Every time one of those drunken fuckers comes up to you on the street and asks you for a smoke, hey, hey, you gonna smoke, brother? Huh? You just keep walking. You don't have spare change and you don't smoke. Hey, you don't want to get caught up in those evil tobacco companies. Besides, mate, you ain't much to look at. You've got to preserve what little you've got, you inane little zero. <laughs> and then all those 70s hippies, hey. They all aged out of their twenties and they thought they lived their lives as their little soul should and they went straight back to the southeastern suburbs, hey? You all love that bitch there in Brighton! And you know what, mate? I'm a fucking artist! I'm for fucking real and I'm not even any fucking good! You! You are Tempora! You will live out a couple of CDs, fuck a couple of chicks cause you're such a cool muso, eh? Hey? Michelle, she doesn't even like musos or any self-centred cunt. But do you know why you all can go and get fucked? Cause you buy up all the properties, fucking wrecks for a quarter of a million dollars, mate. The fucking wogs are selling us out because they want to fuck you all up the ass for what you did to them. Fuck off, limp dick!